welcome back to the channel and you may remember that High Fleet Kalesh was awoken by High Fleet Orca in the last mission and the assault on the Imperial Gate failed well it looks as though High Fleet Kalesh and High Fleet Orca seem to see each other as the weakness and the Hive Tyrants have screamed at each other and it looks as though there's going to be a face-off between the two so we're playing 1500 points on this 4x4 ruined city must be just on the outskirts and we've got four objectives across the middle of the board now each objective is worth a random number of points that's what the paper is underneath and uh, one of them is worth one point two of them are worth two one of them is worth three obviously the tyranids the lists are very very similar indeed and they each see each other as the threat so there's not too much cover there is a couple of ruined cities ruined buildings even as they look to face off so currently Phil has turn one and he's electing to go first unless I sees but let's have a quick look at the lists so on mine I've got 11 Hormigans is a troop choice with uh, toxin sacks. We've got. Let's swap them around. Oh, <laughs> I see what that We've got the zone throps with a neurothrop, uh, toxicrine, exocrine, with two hive guard with impaler cannons, two venom throps, a unit of six gene stealers in there. We've got the winged hive tyrant with twin linked devourers, and I've gave him. Uh, as an old adversary gives him preferred enemy. Yes. Uh, we've gone for that, and I've got the Turbogon with the Miasma Cannon as well. Phil, do you want to talk us through your list? Yes. I so I have an Exocrine, two Hadgar Impaler Cannons, two Venom Throw-ups, a Bio 4, because I love them, three Zone Throw-ups, one of them is a Neuro Throw-up, we've got five Gene Steals of the Broodlord, we've got my Hive Tyrant with two Twinning Devourers of Brainleach Worms and a Hairwire Flamer. Uh, Got a uh, Turvagon with Crushing Claws, Cluster Spines, and a Flamer. And then the Toxicrine has is just the Toxicrine, so yeah. yeah. I did get 18 inch Synapse for my Waller trip. Which was also the same as mine. And I got Psychic Shriek on uh, this Turvagon. The Zonthorpe's got Paroxysm as extra. And my High Tyrant got Warp Blast and the Horror. And of course, the Broodlord has the Horror as well, so. Nice, we've both got a Hive Crone in reserve, and Phil's second troop choice was a Mucleid, also in reserve. Right, so my psychic powers, the uh, zone throw-ups have Onslaught and uh, Warp Blast, of course. Turbogon over this side has Warp Blast and Hive Tyrant has Paroxysm and Onslaught. So, not too shabby at all. However, I want turn one. Do I seize? Oh, I saw the six nearly, that's a five. So, it looks as though it's High Fleet Kalesh, turn one. Right, so High Fleet Kalesh turn one. Everything is surged for with the Gene Stealers are running as well. Phil actually only has 10 Termagants painted uh, and he rolled an 11. So Heresy has appeared. Uh, he's doubled out though, he rolled two fives in a one, so that's no more Gaunt. Over this side, everything's pushing forward. We've done the psychic phase as well. The Hive Tyrant here cast Warp Blast on the Gene Stealers there. Uh, and unfortunately, Phil actually scattered six inches back, not hitting anything. Uh, he also cast Dominion, which means the Hive Tyrant alone is covering the entire army with Synapse. It's going to be an interesting battle. We need to work out who's going to do the damage first, what do we see as the biggest threat in each other's army, and try and take them out first. So, let's move on to shooting. So, it looks to be a game of tactics. Phil has spread the Gene Stealers and the Gaunts out. And he's actually ran the Turbogon and the Zone Throps back as well as the Venom Throp and the Exocrine. The Hive Guard, meanwhile, did take a pop down at the Toxicrine. Managed to get a single wound on it there. Um, Impaler Cannons ignoring cover. Meanwhile, over this side, the Hive Tyrant decided to shoot in at the Turbogon with the Twinning Devourers and managed to do two wounds on her. So, that was it. Not too eventful. But it's going to be a very back and forth game there's not much maneuverability space it's going to be a game of tactics i think so let's have a look at high fleet orca surge forward right, so as i said it's a very tactical game indeed i was there uh, looking at the distance between the gene stealers 
and the Hormigans and decided that I'm probably best off just going forward anyway because if I don't move forward I'll just get counter charge next turn regardless so I might as well try and get them as far up the board towards this exit crane as I can. Uh, the Gene Steelers, I'm trying to bait them in with them to go after these Gene Steelers but Hormigans are a lower initiative he's probably going to go after them We'll have to see what damage is done. The Hive Tyrant taking point. Maybe he's trying to whittle the Gene Steelers down in the shooting phase and then run the Hormigans further upfield, potentially. So yeah, uh, the Hive Guard getting a six inch move into the cover. The Turbogon only getting a three inch move, unfortunately. So at the end of the moving phase, the Turbogon has spawned quite fittingly 11 Gaunt and doubled out as well. So it looks as though the Dice Gods want us to have a tough battle indeed. I was hoping not to double out. In the Psychic phase, the Venomthrope have cast... Venomthrope? Zonethrope have cast uh, Onslaught onto the Hive Guard. As long as I get a two inch move, I'm within range of both of them and I can pop them and double them out. Let's see if we can do it. Right, so it turns out I'm a moron and don't read the codex properly. It only grants... Uh, uh, old adversary only grants uh, preferred enemy in combat. So I actually managed to roll four ones when wounding the Gene Stealers. Phil making quite a lot of his five up saves as well. And I also didn't realize that the Exocrine is only range 24, which means the Turbogon was out of range. Not so good. So we managed to kill one more Gene Stealer with the Exocrine. Uh, as a result, I've ran the Gaunts forward. I've still kept them in a string line though, keeping them within six of the Venom throw up at the back. The Toxocrine and the Zone Throps also pushing forward. However, one of the hive guardian just maybe seeing the ruins there uh, they are on the bottom floor it's just without me having the shells glued on the top i can't physically fit them in so we have agreed they're on the bottom floor uh managed to kill one of the venom thropes uh with a three inch run on onslaught if i'm getting a six or even a little bit more i'd have been outside the ruins and being able to reach that second one as well uh the gaunts have also ran again just pushing forward ever so slightly and it looks as though things are going to be very very back and forth indeed so it looks as though who's done the most uh, I've killed a zone throw up and a couple of jinx dealers you put three wounds on me monsters yep so reserves is not on is on all right so we said it was going to be a game of tactics me running this far forward and even a nice line of guns means Phil can quite happily flame them yeah, and then charge what's left with those remaining Gene Steelers there. Uh, looks as though everything's just pushed forward slightly. The Venom throw up and the Biovore, the Gaunts, and the Turbogon meeting High Fleet Orca as it comes surging through the building there. Phil tried to cast Paroxysm on the Hive Tyrant and I managed to stop it only needing a five due to being a Psyker. And then he managed to get a Spirit Leech off on the Hormigants but I managed to stop it rolling a couple of sixes. Meanwhile, up this side, the Hive Tyrant was moving up the field and he elected to cast Warp Lance on the Venom Throw-ups here, but Phil failed to get it off. So I'm guessing, probably gonna lose one of them to the Devourers, maybe two. I don't know if I can make that many Warp saves, to be honest. Believe, believe, it's a Tyranid way. Yes, what I should have done, see, was keep the Gorns back to get me that three-up cover. But yes. What, in the range of your Hive Guard? Yes, like I said, think of a Tyranid, everything's expendable. Fair enough, let's see what happens in the shooting phase. Right, so shooting phase has been quite productive indeed for Phil. The Biovore getting a direct hit here on the uh, zone throps and managing to inflict a single wound on the Neurothrope thanks to Barrage. Meanwhile, I lost the Venom throps as expected. His Hive Guard shot at my Hive Guard and didn't hit at all. So they must be scrambling the sensors indeed. Meanwhile, I lost a single Gene Stealer and a handful of Gaunts thanks to the Toxicreens um, Plasma Cloud. It's a Choking Cloud. Choking Cloud and the cough, Sting... Cough, cough, cough. <laughs> and the Sting and Salvo from the Turbogon there. Unfortunately, I didn't pass very many cover saves at all. So, looks as though it's been quite productive for Phil. I even lost four Gaunts down here as well in the shooting phase. He has ran the Turbogons, Turbogons, the Zone Throps back just scoping the field out, looking at the Hive Fleet Orca. The Gaunts snap firing up at the Hive Tyrant, getting a couple of hits, but failing to wound. So I'm guessing charges, he's gonna be going the there. Charge. Yeah. And I'm just gonna roll a tube for fun. Five inch, that's probably it. 
Yeah, yeah it's definitely a myth. And then the Torx card has a 10 inch charge to the gene cells. I mean, to the uh, thermobots. Yeah. That will be all watch. Well, let's see if I make it, and I don't. No, and he doesn't have fleet. And there's six guns there for that one watch. There is. So we'll work that out. We'll work this brutal combat here out and come back. Right, so the Broodlord and the Gene Sailors made mincemeat of most of the guns down there. One of them survived, however. I wish Phil had actually killed him so that I could have shot at the Gene Stealers because he's now going to kill me in my turn and then assault something else in his turn. So, do I charge the Toxicrine or do I send the Toxicrine after the Gaunt and drop that nice pie plate on them? Don't know. We'll have to see. I'm thinking I need to get rid of this Broodlord because if I don't, he's going to make mincemeat of him. What a productive movement phase. The hive clone comes zipping on, clipping the hive tyrant, doing two wounds. Phil failed his ground and check, took a wound, and he was left on one wound. So in the psych, <laughs> <laughs> in the psych phase, the zone throw decided to let out an almighty war blast straight through the ruins, and Phil failed his cover saver. I did peril. It's like Legolas. <laughs> with no I, feet. I did no peril, legs. unfortunately, like and. Uh, yeah, the Neurothrop got dragged into the warp along with the Splattered Hive Tyrant. So yeah, never mind. Uh, movement phase, the Toxicrine is pushing forward. I'm probably going to drop that nice large blast over here, see if I can do some wounds on the Hive Guard or the Venom Throp. The Gene Stealers, I don't know what to do. Do I charge them at the Gaunt? Thanks, Phil. Or charge them at the Gene Stealers here in the hopes of being able to get them out. I was contemplating chucking the zone throw up since just to try and hold them up but they wouldn't do the damage do i charge the toxicrine in as well i don't know we'll have to see what the rest of the shooting entails we've got the flamer to hopefully wound the toxicrine and we've got the exocrine within range of the turbogon as well the hive tyrant taking point yet again hopefully we can do a lot of damage here it was a big risk doing what i did in the psychic phase because the hive Hive Crone, Exocrine could either see the Turvagon or he could have gone for the Hive Tyrant he was, as he was on the ground. So, lots of decisions to make here in the shooting phase. We'll have to see how it pans out. But High Fleet Orca knows that High Fleet Kalesh is the weaker of the High Fleets. Right, so the Exocrine took aim at the Turvagon and Phil passed a couple of his five up cover saves, losing two wounds altogether. The Hive Tyrant did amazingly well he got seven wounds and guess what Phil passed every single three up armor save not a happy bunny however the other venom throb's gone the hive guard managed to splat him all over the place and I was contemplating what to do with the toxicrine did we go for the gaunt did we go down here potentially get an instant death and unfortunately it scattered off only hitting the exocrine um, and we did manage to wound but Phil passed his armor save uh, the gaunt shot into the gaunt down there and managed to kill one yeah one and um, only other thing that happened is the turbogon took in with a sting and salvo uh, over at the exocrine, exocrine? toxicrine and uh, didn't do any damage we managed to get a couple of wounds through but Phil saved everything Assault phase, I don't know what to do. Five Gene Stealers versus a Broodlord and two. Plus I've got the Hormigan. The Hormigan would swing if uh, Phil goes with the Gene Stealers instead. Do I charge the uh, Zone Throbs in there to try and hold them up? Because if he gets out, he's probably going to make mince meat of him. So, yeah, I think I want to do that. Let's charge them in. So the combat's down here. The Broodlord only managed to cut down one of me Gene Stealers. My Gene Stealers in turn cut down both the Phil's and the Zonthropes and the Hormigan failing to do anything. Oh, my Gene Stealers also cut them, so that's what tied it up. Oh yeah, they did. Um, so yeah, Toxicrine went for a long charge against the Hive Guard, but unfortunately took a wound. I figured I might as well go for it because if I don't, the Hive Guard's probably going to pummel them next turn anyway as well as the Toxicrine looking straight over there. So I thought, why not give it a go? Cause I'm probably gonna lose them anyway. So yeah, that happened. Let's move on to uh, High Fleet Kalesh, turn three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Right, so High Fleet Carlesh is still pushing forward. Toxicreen looking to make an outflank move over here. Meanwhile, the Mucleid tried to deep strike onto the objective, but unfortunately scattered 12 inches exactly right to the board edge and has ran half an inch. Over here, they've gone to surging forward, scuttling around, probably looking to take on the Gaunts there. Never know, maybe join the combat and try and take out the Gene Stealers. Zone Throps have a plan, I think, for that Toxic Cream, as does everything on this flank. Meanwhile, the Hive Crone, Vector Struck, the um, Toxicrine, Phil pushing far enough forward that I can't turn back on Vector Strike and with either of my flyers. So yeah, not too bad of a turn. However, it looks as though it's back and forth every turn. As it, as it stands, it looks as though I may have slightly more on the board than Phil. But uh, yeah, he's got a lot of stuff coming in and it looks as though it's definitely gonna be an epic clash of the high fleet here. Let's see what damage he does in return. So down here, the Toxicrine is no more. It took fire from the Exocrine and the Hive Guard to take it out, unfortunately. Phil, in the sight of his, tried to cast Spirit Leech on it, got it off twice, and I managed to actually stop it, rolling a double six. The Gaunts managed to blast apart most of the Gaunts that were down here, but the Toxicrine there also used Choking Cloud trying to clip the hive guard monstrous creatures can be still clipped by blasts uh, yeah so the gaunts have gone nasty nasty stuff indeed i've lost the toxicrine that's not what i wanted i was hoping to send them after tervigon but it looks as though phil's target prioritization is going quite well i think i'm gonna have to send my uh, hive guard after his Toxicrine. Leave Pinky alone! <laughs> so yep, we've got this combat down here to do, and I don't know, yeah, that's the only combat. Right, so combat's down here. I lost two Gene Stealers, not inflicting any wounds on the Broodlord. That weapon skill seven, proven very, very effective against me indeed. Shadow Paroxysm and try and kill him? Oh, I don't know. Meanwhile, <laughs> he needs to go, mate. Uh, the ex, the exocrine, the hive tyrant is going to try and take out the hive guard with the twinling devours. Hopefully, maybe at least kill one of them. The hive crone has dropped the hover mode. He can take out a lot of the gaunts. Uh, the gaunts aren't going to be able to secure objectives. However, uh, I can take a lot of them out. They're going to prove nasty. That strength four AP five can mow through other gaunts, as you just saw. But the flame attempt can also go back and hit the toxicrine. The Miasma Cannon as well can also shoot at the Toxicrine, as can the Stinging Salvo from the Turvagon as well. The Hive Guard have got a pick of targets. Do they go after the other Hive Guard or the Toxicrine? The Exocrine can go after the other Exocrine or the Toxicrine. So, yeah, exciting stuff. It's been very brutal indeed. But can High Fleet Orca stay on top? Right, so Psychic Phase. The zone throbs tried to cast paroxysm on the broodlord. I only got it off twice on seven dice. And Phil managed to stop it, unfortunately. Shooting fears, however. Hive tyrants, twin link devourers, got five wounds on the hive guard. And Phil filled four of his saves, bringing them down. Meanwhile, I used the miasma cannon and the stinger salvo, as well as the hive guard and the flamer from the. Uh, hive crone um, and only managed to do two wounds to the toxicrine and in the end it was the exocrine it was getting a three up cover save due to shooting through the turbogon but we managed to get two wounds through that three up cover and bring the toxicrine down i wish i kind of shot him first because then the flamer against the gaunts probably would have been better over here but never mind we've now got this combat to resolve Right, so yet again, this combat down here, ongoing. Phil killed the two Gene Sealers as expected. And he's moving first, the Gaunt has shuffled forward. The Hive Crone coming across, Vector striking the Hive Guard here. I did lose the Hive Guard due to being on one wound because of the Biovar earlier. The Tervagon with Crushing Claws is probably going to my Hive Crone because he's in hover mode. 
Bivore and the Exocrine pulling sideways. Phil's probably looking to start eating away at my Exocrine. I think this next turn for both of us is going to be absolutely critical to see who is going to stay on top. We've got to start, got to start thinking about objectives. Right, what a psychic phase indeed. The Turbogon here let out a massive psychic scream and actually inflicted three wounds on the Hive Crone. Amazing stuff, Phil rolled an 11. As a result, the Zone Throbs tried to cast Spirit Leech um, and he managed to get it off but rolled a 9 for the leadership. Thank God. Well, not thank God because now I'm going to die. Uh, fire coming in from the Turbogon in the shooting phase as well, failing to wound. The Gaunt here unloaded into the Hive Guard in the ruins around this side. Not doing any damage but took a single wound from the Flamer from the Hive Crone. So that wasn't too good at all. However, down here the Exocrine shot up at the Hive Tyrant. I elected not to jink, Phil needing six to hit. And got two hits and two wounds. So he's down to two, passing his ground and test though. It's brutal, brutal stuff. We've got this combat to resolve and Phil's got a couple of charges that he says he wants to make. Curve going into the Hive Crone, so you will have your Flamer. Yep, if you want to fire D3, that's three. Pause. That is none. And then you can fire a missile if you want to. Why not? Yeah. Nope. So my charge? Is seven. That's yep. Definitely in. Yep, that's in. If Gaunt will then charge the high gun. I don't want this, Phil. That's not fair. No nope. hits. And that's an eight. That's definitely in one. Yep. And then the spore mines will charge. <laughs> <laughs> the Exocrine. Why not? Yeah, go for it. Charge distance. Now this is hard, so I'm probably going to need a 12. Oh, I've got a, I've got a 10. 10, so that's a 5. I'm which, in. Which gets you in, but I've got me overwatch. I do. You have to all three here. Six dice. Six dice, sixes. Oh! Three hits! Oh, one. Oh, they got <laughs> Wow. Saved. So, yeah, we've got some interesting combats to work out. I'm expecting to lose the Hive Crone here, though. Right, so as it turns out, Hive Crones are a bit better in combat than what we thought. I managed to get two wounds on the Turbogon, so she's down to two. Phil, in turn, only getting a single wound on me, so that's tying her up in combat. It's not ideal, I didn't really want that. I wanted to be able to shoot her in my shooting phase to blow the Gaunts up. The Gaunts did kill the Hive Guard, unfortunately. Phil actually getting five wounds in, so not great. Down here, I lost, uh, I managed to get a single wound through with the Hormigan, with that four poison doing the work for us there so it's not looking good for either side there's not a lot left i don't know how best to deal with the gaunt i'm gonna have to send the turbogon after them the problem is if i do that then uh i don't know might get lucky with a hive crone and kill the turbogon but if i kill the turbogon i should kill the gaunts as well i don't know there's too many choices so uh yeah the biovore is a nuisance as is the exocrine bro i figure if I can kill the zone throbs, but that's still a lot of wounds to chomp through. Hmm. I've got to start now thinking about. Know who's the one, don't we? <laughs> I've still got another turn to start thinking about objectives, though. So I'm thinking if I can do the damage this turn, we should hopefully be okay. But let's see what happens. Wow! So much confusion as to what to go for here. Did I cast Onslaught with a Hive Tyrant onto the Exocrine to start moving for the objective? Oh, I don't know. The, the Turvagon, we've agreed that he, she is right in the building. Unfortunately, I can't get too close, um, but we've agreed it is a five inch charge due to ignoring the base of the flyer um, to reach the Turvagon. It was a case of do I shoot the Gaunts or do I charge the Turvagon? I need to kill the Turvagon and hopefully that'll kill most of the Gaunts. But, the Hive Tyrant decided to lend a hand and cast Paroxysm on the Turbogon. We managed to get it off, but we took a wound due to Perils of the Warp. Phil didn't stop it, unfortunately, and I managed to only roll a 1. So it does mean that my Hive Crone is hitting on 3s. That's important. So hopefully we should get, hopefully, between both the Turbogon and the Hive Crone should do some damage. Advice, become heresy turbogon. <laughs> heresy turbogon indeed. So yeah, um, it was a case of do I start and push forward 
trying to get this objective with the Exocrine. If I can kill the Gaunt, I know I've got another clear turn for definite. So yeah, let's move on to the shooting phase. Right, so my Turvagon made it into combat. The Hive Crone, despite hitting on threes, rolled a double one and a two. So that wasn't too good. The Turvagon that fills cutting the Hive Crone down to the ground. And then in turn, my Hive Crone, Hive Crone Turvagon crashing through the building and managed to smash his Turvagon apart. So I have to backlash, unfortunately, only doing four wounds to the Gaunts. They did. Passed the leadership test as well. Phil rolled a three. In combat here with the Broodlord, uh, he managed to kill the Hormigant. Yep. Uh, he's now out of synapse range though, because in shooting, we managed to kill two zone throws between fire from the Hive Tyrant and the Exocrine. So that wasn't too bad at all, but I know what is coming on turn five. He's gonna charge the Gaunt in over there at the Exocrine to stop me moving back to grab this objective. So it's a case of what do I do to grab objectives? I'm not gonna have very much indeed. We need to start thinking about this with it being turn five. Right, so the Gaunt's managed to pass their instinctive behavior and have pulled back towards this objective. Gonna try and contest it with the Turbagon. The Turbagon took another wound from the Hive Crone. He failed his instinctive behavior, but he can't come down to the ground and charge in the same turn. The Mucolid, <laughs> no you can't, which is great, thankfully. Uh, the Mucolid is going for that objective, so the Turvagon is going to be battling it out for a potential of two objectives. In the sighting phase, Phil tried to get uh, Spirit Leech off on the Turvagon, got it off three times and I managed to roll three five-ups due to being a Psyker. I think, however, I'm going to lose the, the Hive Tyrant to the Exocrine. No doubtedly, but it's not a lot left for either side, really. It's been bloody and brutal. We need to see whether or not we can make it to objectives. Right, it's getting very tense indeed here. The Termagants shooting in at the Hive Tyrant, got a single wound, and I was sweating, but I passed me three up armor. Meanwhile, the Exocrine took aim. Phil got three wounds. I elected the Jink and passed all three Jinks. Oh my word, what absolute brutality has been had between these high fleets today. So, Phil's also ran the Neurothro up there to try and contest the objective. Oh, exciting stuff. We've got this combat to work out here. Right, so just looking at the board, this could potentially be the last turn and I've got a lot to think about. Do I move the Exocrine and then try and get Onslaught on with the Tyrant, with the Hive Tyrant, try and score me this one? As long as the zone throws can hold that uh, Broodlord up, I should be able to score this one. Down here, this is going to be the only chance to be able to score it. So I'm guessing I'm probably going to need to put the Hive Tyrant into the zone throw up um, to try and score me that one. Uh, if I don't, uh, sorry, if the game continues, then Phil's got a very good chance of being able to actually take that from me with the Exocrine um, if I don't kill it with my Exocrine. Meanwhile, over here, which way do I point the Turvigan? Do I kill the Gaunt or the Mucolid? I don't know. Because we don't know how many points each objective is worth, it's literally a massive, massive gamble indeed. Oh, I don't know. I think if I go for that one, then if the game continues, the Turvigon should be able to come back over to grab this one as well. Whereas if I go that way, I don't know because then she's kind of between both of them so I can actually secure it, either of them. I don't know. I don't know. Right, so it looks as though I made the right decision. I managed to get Onslaught off and Phil unfortunately stopped it. The Exocrine only got a one inch run but it was all he needed. So he fired into the Exocrine here and only did a single wound. Meanwhile the Hive Tyrant got 11 wounds on the Neurothrop and Phil failed four saves that brought him to the ground. Over here, the Turbagon with the Miasma Cannon and the Stinger Salvo managed to kill the Gaunt. She is actually on both, so that one is actually contested. This one, I'm going to claim that one because she can only actually hold one. So I'm going to nominate that she's on here. The combat's down here. I did get Paroxysm on the Broodlord, minus in his weapon skill by one, which meant I was at least hitting him back on fours, but failed to even do anything. So, we don't know what points are under what objectives. 
I currently have Slay the Warlord, but Phil has First Blood. Phil, does the game continue? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Yes, <laughs> it does. does, so I'm guessing Phil's probably going to get Slay the Warlord now. High Fleet Kalesh is feeling the punishment of High Fleet Orca, but they have passed their synapse checks. Phil moving every moving the extra crane towards the Hive Tyrant. The Hive Crone coming back. Tried to flame the Hive Tyrant, despite getting a wound, passed his armor save. In sighted phase, the Broodlord managed to get Dominion off, so he's now got a six inch synapse to try and support the Exocrine. So yeah, shooting phase, like I said, the Flamer, a little wounded the uh, Hive Tyrant. I managed to pass him saving the Exocrine, despite six shots hitting on fours, Phil unfortunately didn't get a single hit on the Hive Tyrant. So that's not too good at all. He's got a couple of charges to make, and I'm guessing he's probably going to charge the Exocrine at the Hive Tyrant. And then the Hive Tyrant. He can't, no, he can't. Just, come, just come down, so he can't, but yeah. Oh yeah, he's angry. He's in, but let's see whether or not I can actually bring him down to Overwatch and close combat. So the Hive Tyrant here, despite getting three hits and wounds to Overwatch, didn't inflict any unsaved wounds at all. Phil passed his armor saves. Hammer of Wrath wounded me, but I passed my save again. And in combat, we managed to get a single wound through the Exocrine. Phil hitting me back on fives, unfortunately didn't get any hits. And again, in combat down here, Phil inflicting three wounds on the Zone Throbs and the invulnerable saves of the Zone Throbs holding out. Still not doing any damage back though. So yeah, there's not too much for the High Fleet Orca left to do, but uh, I think my Exocrine will go for the Biovore and my Tervagon will probably go for the Hive Crone. Alright, so very, very quick turns now. Turbigon has pulled sideways, looking to potentially attack and bring down the Hive Crow. And I tried to cast Warp Lance and Psychic Phase, but unfortunately, Phil managed to stop it. I got off three times and he rolled three sixes. Amazing stuff. However, the Hive Tyrant did get Paroxysm off and managed to bring the Hive Crow down to Weapon Skill 1. So at least I'm hitting him on threes and he's hitting me back on fives in combat, depending on what damage I do uh, with the shooting. So yeah. Not bad at all. Right, so massive turn of events. Uh, the Hive Crone is down to one wound in combat and I am down to two wounds on the Turbigon. Um, I don't know if the Turbigon actually controls this objective because the Hive Crone is not within three inches. Uh, so I'm not sure about that at all. But down here, we managed to uh, inflict another wound on the Exocrine. I remembered preferred enemy this time uh, and thankfully the Exocrine didn't do any damage. However, this guy down here, managed to kill the zone throbs and failed all four saves and he is a true choice so he is going to score this objective yeah <laughs> so it looks as though things have turned round indeed for high fleet Kalesh. does the game continue no oh crap <laughs> right so so i've got slay the warlord and you've got first blood one more right both don't have mine right your mucolid has this but how many points is it worth Two points. Two, so that gives you three. Uh, this one's contested. It is. It's gonna be the three. Oh, it's the one. Should we see where that is? It's gonna be the two, isn't it? It's gonna be the two. It's the two. So and the, that one must be the three. That means you actually win. Yeah. So you've got two, three points for holding the objectives in an absolute blind ribbon assault phase down here. Don't you know that I don't think either of us are the weakness, so I'm just back <laughs> I tell you that now. And this it is so close, I actually, my heart is still beating right now. <laughs> oh. Wow, down to the wire. Down, I mean, come on. Like this here, if you had, if, if them zone throbs had simply held that up, that would have, basically that changed the game right there. This one oh. combat. Oh. Wow. Phil, I'll call him Swishy epic game, like mate. This, Epic, epic game. Absolutely bloody, brutal, epic stuff. Such a fun game playing Nids against Nids. Yeah, Phil, 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 are you okay? <laughs> wow, what a bloody, brutal game. I think we definitely need to try something like this again. Um, yeah, so thanks very much for watching and uh, hopefully we'll see you in the next bloody battle report.